The twin paradox is one of the most famous problems in special relativity, and despite more than a century of discussion, there is still a lot of fascination, confusion, and misunderstanding about it. And despite all the explanations that have been given, I think most of them tend to miss one or two vital points. So here I'm going to try to give my own take on the twin paradox and try to explain it in as simple a way as possible without sacrificing accuracy. So first of all, what is the twin paradox? Well, imagine we have two twins of the same age, say Alex and Bob. Now imagine that in Alex's reference frame, Bob shoots off on a rocket ship then comes back home. So Bob has a constant velocity in one direction and then a constant velocity in the other. Now according to special relativity, time moves slower for moving observers. So if we have a moving train, then an observer on the ground will observe that a clock on the train ticks more slowly than a clock on the ground. This effect is called time dilation, and if you want to know why it happens, check out my video. Now the tricky part comes when we realize that time dilation happens both ways. So for the train observer, a clock on the ground ticks more slowly than a clock on the train. And this symmetric effect is where the apparent twin paradox comes from. So because of time dilation in Alex's reference frame, Bob's clock will tick more slowly. So when Bob comes back to Earth, he will have aged slightly less than Alex. In other words, Bob will be younger than Alex. But remember that time dilation happens both ways. So we can also see how things play out in Bob's reference frame. And here, according to Bob, it is Alex that shoots off, along with the Earth, then turns around and comes back. So according to Bob, it is actually Alex that is younger. So according to Bob, Alex is younger, and according to Alex, Bob is younger. But how can they both be right? Well, it looks like we have a paradox in our hands. But as it turns out, this apparent paradox is not a paradox at all, and I'll explain why. But first of all, I'd like to talk about some solutions that I don't really think tell the whole picture. So, according to what I call the general relativity school, Alex is right that Bob is younger, and this is because of gravitational time dilation. And the key here is that Bob experiences acceleration when he switches around from his outward journey to his inward journey. And this acceleration is something that is real and physical, and Bob can feel it because he's going to be pushed backward in the spaceship during the acceleration as if he is in a gravitational field. Now, according to Einstein's equivalence principle, acceleration and gravity are in fact indistinguishable. So in other words, an observer that experiences a pull of gravity might as well just be in an accelerated reference frame. So, as Bob accelerates, it will be as if he is being pulled away from Alex by gravity, which means it'll be as if Alex is higher up in a uniform gravitational field compared to Bob. Now because of gravitational time dilation, which is different from velocity time dilation, Alex is going to age more quickly than Bob. According to Bob, because Alex is sitting in a place of higher gravitational potential. So, according to the so-called general relativity school, this added aging effect is enough to put Alex and Bob in agreement that Alex has in fact aged more by the time they're reunited. So, that's the gravitational time dilation approach, which is based on Bob's physical acceleration. However, I think the twin paradox can be resolved without appealing to general relativity. And we can see this by reproducing the paradox in a situation where there is no physical acceleration at all. So, imagine that Bob shoots off again on his spaceship, and as he reaches some nearby star, let's say Betelgeuse, he encounters a third observer, Carol, who is traveling at the same speed as Bob, relative to Alex, but in the opposite direction. So, as they fly past each other, Carol reads the time off Bob's watch, and sets her own watch to that time, then continues flying off to Earth. Now in Alex's reference frame, Bob's clock will have ticked less by the time Bob has gotten to Beetlejuice, and since Carol is traveling at the same speed as Bob, her clock will tick by the exact same amount during her journey to Earth. So according to Alex, the Bob-Carol clock will have ticked less than Alex's clock. Now in Bob's reference frame, the situation is the reverse. Alex's clock will have ticked less by the time Bob reaches Beetlejuice, and if we then switch seats to Carol's reference frame, Alex's clock will tick again by the same amount by the time Carol reaches Earth, since the speed of Alex relative to Carol is the same as the speed of Alex relative to Bob. So it seems that we've now reproduced the paradox again. Or have we? Well, it turns out we've already glimpsed the solution of the paradox by admitting that we've in fact switched between two reference frames from the outward to the inward journey. 
from Bob to Carol. And that's really it. In the original scheme, we cannot apply the time dilation principle by sitting in Bob's frame of reference because Bob doesn't, in fact, inhabit only one inertial reference frame. He inhabits two, one on the outward journey and one on the inward journey. And these reference frames are different because he had to have accelerated from one frame to the other if we just sit in the point of view of Bob. For the outward frame, Alex is moving at some velocity, and Bob is standing still in the first half, so Alex is aging slower than Bob. But then in the second half, Bob moves much faster than Alex, so now he's aging even slower than Alex. And so overall, throughout the entire journey, Bob ages less than Alex. And for the inward journey, the analysis is similar. And as it turns out, whether you're looking at Alex's reference frame, the outbound reference frame, or the inbound reference frame, Bob always ends up younger than Alex. There is no paradox. Now, I have come across one counterargument to this, and it basically says, how can we say that it's Bob that occupies two inertial frames, and not Alex? For if we take it from Bob's perspective, then it looks like it's Alex who shoots off in one inertial frame, then shoots back in another. And this argument really cuts to the core of what an inertial frame actually is, and whether we can say that any frame is actually objectively inertial, i.e. non-accelerating. For if all motion is relative, then what gives us the right to say that Bob is accelerating and not Alex? Well, for sure, if we're talking about mathematical coordinate frames devoid of any physics, then there is no such thing as absolute acceleration. Everything just depends on the coordinate frame we choose. If we say that frame A is standing still and frame B is accelerating, then we can equally say that frame A is accelerating and frame B is standing still, depending on whose point of view we choose. So, mathematically, Alex and Bob both have equal claim to an inertial reference frame. But remember, this is physics, not mathematics. And in physics, it turns out that we can tell who's right and who's wrong. And it's down to some elementary physical principles, such as the conservation of momentum in all inertial reference frames. So in Alex's frame, we can imagine that Bob's ship is turned around by some physical mechanism, like the ejection of rocket fuel. So in this picture, momentum is conserved because Bob's turnaround is compensated for by the momentum of the rocket fuel. However, in Bob's frame, not only is the rocket fuel unaccounted for, but the Earth just randomly changes direction without the application of any real force. So clearly, momentum is not conserved, and we know that Bob's frame is an accelerated frame. In other words, the physics tells us that Bob undergoes real or proper acceleration, while Alex does not. And it is this crucial distinction between proper acceleration and coordinate acceleration that I think many other accounts of the twin paradox tend to miss. And it is vital, for at the end of the day, the twin paradox is not really about relative motion, it is about which twin ages more, and that's a matter of physics. So, here we have our solution. Alex is right because he takes only one inertial frame, while Bob takes two. And if we insist that Bob occupies only one reference frame, then we'd have to concede that it is non-inertial. Now that's just my take on things, and I'd love to hear what you all think. So feel free to post your thoughts in the comments below.